I've been thinking a lot about frequency. The fact that you can hear my voice is that you're hearing the frequency of my voice. My voice vibrates at a certain harmonic and that's how we communicate. And I got a sense that this is the way it has been whether you happen to believe that the earth is 6,000 or 560 million years old. Um, everything in you, everything in this planet, everything in this universe is on frequency and harmonics. So this got me to thinking. And I said to myself, well, if everything is on a frequency, then that means God would have to be on a frequency. But only stand to reason, right? So when you see what our government does in mind control, how they're controlling our minds now, you know, you actually saw the video I have done in the past and showed you what to look for in those towers. Those ain't no cell phone receptors or receiver folks it's something much more nefarious but i digress so everything is on frequencies everything here is an example for instance when you look at the frequencies and how it begins to increase again everything in light is a wave or a frequency it's all around us when you travel same thing, frequency, harmonics, photons, all connected. We know that frequencies can go in one direction or they can actually cancel each other out. These are just facts. We know that electromagnetic has a spectrum as well. You can go from the gamma wavelength way down on the other end to the radio side of the spectrum. We know that there's an infrared wavelength and, by the way, frequency. As you can see, this begins to go down. I did the video, and I won't do it again, where we went through the complete harmonic. Um, I, I, I feel bad about the squirrels who brains blew. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry about the uh, cats and the dogs that were on the ceilings, but the idea was to show you. The animals got it. <laughs> I'm not sure too many of the people, but the animals got it. So, as you can see, we have a high pitch, high intensity. Or, you get down to the low pitch, low intensity. It's, it's again, frequency, harmonics. Your body is vibrating at a certain frequency. You produce a harmonic frequency. If you ever listen to a piece of lettuce, they sing, you know, quite beautiful. I think the one that I found most intriguing was the Redwoods. Their song, their words sounded like one of pain and sadness, but it's very true. Um, check it out. So. Here's your equation, so we know what it is for frequency. Yeah, there's a math for it. We can track it. We can see it. We can feel it. We can think it. Entanglement theory. Yeah, it gets to be a real problem here when you start getting into the quantum side of the equation, but listen, the fact of the matter whether you're using the standard model, um, it still comes down to frequencies and harmonics. All connected. The interesting thing that we're finding out now is that the pyramid is now one gigantic frequency. Receiver, and I think... Um, receiver and sender as well. I hear that if you stand in the king's chamber 
at the very crystal housing. And if you begin to set certain harmonics off, that the amplitude waves that are built inside become too great for a human to take. That's what I've heard. But I do know this. I know, in fact, that they have found the science now. It's real. And we're just beginning to explore it. And I dare say, as we get better at this, as we learn more, we're going to find out what the ancients knew. And that is because, again, folks, our memories, our recent memories, have been wiped clean. We can't even remember to the pyramids. <laughs> yeah. And if the Mandela effect continues, we'll probably won't even remember um, this country's uh, true history. So when we talk about harmonics, remember, you would think that harmonics and frequencies are the same, but they're not. And when you really begin to understand the science, when you begin to understand what they discovered at Roswell, what we now know and which is now into the current generation, we're going way beyond the Aurora Project, folks. We're into something now that no one got. If, if you know what feral liquids are and you begin to apply what I'm showing you here, Ooh, baby. It's like the Dr. Timothy Leary said, you can take a trip out into the cosmo and never leave your couch. So understand harmonics. Now, I grew up playing a number of different instruments. Clarinet, the flute, the piccolo, the saxophone. I enjoyed particularly the woodwinds. And... The reason why was that particularly with the wood, the woodwinds and I could get variations of tone using the vibration of the reed, which would then produce a frequency and which would produce the sound. Now, if you begin to take that where your spirit, your soul is concerned and take it then into the quantum level and let's take it out to the universe. It's all connected. It all has a part and form and function. Again, waves are traveling about the same speed. Right now, each of us, all of us, are being bombarded by trillions of neutrinos. You go right through everything. It's the same thing with radiation, same thing with frequencies. If you don't think that this is true, look at the new riot control devices they have, those LARDs. I guarantee you this, on either the sound or the light, because now they've got the microwaves that can fry your butt right on the spot. <clears throat> May it never be so. If you can see this as well and begin to understand that harmonics begin to have an impact on frequencies. Frequencies begin to vibrate. Vibration then begins to have an impact on whether it is a material substance. And this goes into whether you can understand in the quantum level of string theory, it vibrates over into other realities, other universes. And I believe that that's what the quantum computing is doing. I believe it is setting a frequency on a vibration that um, they begin to come into parallel. They become out of sync with ours, but as they begin to sync with the next reality, the next universe, the frequencies begin to mirror each other and then there is a connection made. Just takes a whole lot of power to do that right now. We haven't figured out how to do that on an easier scale. So as here you can see the first five harmonics of a vibrating string. Again, folks, everything is connected. And this has to do, you say, with well, what does this have to do with God? You have to, in order to, I believe, as you begin to mature, awake, you're going to have to grow up. And that means you're going to have to throw off some of the crap you were taught and I was taught and understand it was wrong. You know, we'll get into other videos as to doing that. I'm already starting 
to lead you with the breadcrumbs. But again, so here's the math for the first harmonic, second harmonic universe, third harmonic universe. Do you get the idea here now? You can have a stationary source or a moving source. Now this has an impact, particularly when you begin to think about frequency waves. Um, this goes as well with uh, photons, light waves. And if you can begin to understand how to manipulate, control, or divert, amplify, you can begin to have quite a bit of power, more than what you could ever imagine. So begin to think about this. We have a carrier signal, signal modulating wave signal, and then the frequency modulated signal. All right, keep this in mind as we go forward. As we know, you have the Schumann resonance. Good Lord, between all the people in the Nibiru community and uh, the community of awakening in general, we're finding out what the physicists have known. Tesla had it right. I'm going to do a, a whole video on him. Yeah. What that man and, 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 and some of they didn't get all of his works. That's the cool thing. They didn't get it all. It can power crafts. It can change metal to liquid. The liquid can form and become more stronger than anything. It will actually deflect radiation. It can move within a space that it vibrates at a frequency that it transcends time. You starting to get it? Frequencies and harmonics affect the body. The reason why we cannot travel out into interstellar space is that we haven't figured out. Our ET friends have. And, 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 the, and, and the powers to be, they now know the technology. And how it works is this. Remember the outside that I showed you. We'll go back one. Very quickly for a review. You can take solid metal and you can make it liquid. You can make it stronger than any known substance, impenetrable by radiation, light. You ready for this? Speed or time. Now you can create with inside of this bubble another bubble that will allow you to put a bioform in there, carbon base, and it can sit within this bubble and shield and never be impacted. It can arrive and actually... <laughs> as fast as you can think things can travel and it can go quicker. So there you go. Do you know that metals have frequencies? They do. I never really understood this until, oh, months ago. And if you can begin to understand what feral fluids begin to do and can begin to understand the frequency of each metal, just think what an alchemist could do with this. Yeah, I think some of you, the light bulb is going off. So here is the frequency wavelengths of metal, silver, gold, chromium, copper, platinum, aluminum. Starting to learn something here, folks. What's more particular is gold. Yeah. Gold has this incredible, oh, the, the, the molecules that make up gold are just quite fascinating. I'll do a video on that. But for the moment, think of ferrofluids, gold, right? Now think about this. It can amplitude, it can amplify both sound, it can deflect radiation, it can become a focal point, both in and out. When you begin to think about particles and begin to now understand that you can begin to manipulate at frequency and certain harmonics, you begin to change the very fabric of time itself, space. Here is the particles and amplification. The point is, think about this. Now think about if you were a god 
So what is it about golden gods? Golden gods. Um, every god that has been written about has had this need for gold. The reason why they call it the golden times was because of the time of the Anunnaki. Back in Southeast Africa. Do your research. Those gold mines go back millions and millions of years. And that got me to thinking, particularly about the Hebrew God. When you begin to understand what these metals, the special properties they have within them, how you can begin to manipulate them, it changes everything. So why gold? I mean, seriously, why gold? I mean, you read about it the Anunnaki. We're going to study right now more about the Hebrew God. And I'm going to show you what a theory I have. So, I believe, and I'll just set the premise right now, that the Holy of Holies was a supercharged particle superconductor. That the deity existed in it. And it took on very special properties. And I'm going to explain a little bit more on this. So remember, superconductivity, the connection to God. With the Hebrews, there were three different temples. This is obviously um, a depiction of what it was when they were wandering in the wilderness. Uh, this is the picture of the inner court, the um, Holy of Holies, the showbread, etc. Okay. Then Solomon came, and Solomon has never been equal since. All gold. If you've never really studied the uh, specs on this and the material list, you really ought to because there's something very, there, there's something buried that we have never, never even thought about. But here it is, all covered in gold. And then um, after Nebuchadnezzar came in, uh, destroyed the first temple, uh, it's actually technically the second temple, um, this was the uh, third temple. Of course, it would be the second temple technically if you didn't consider that what they had erected in the desert was just not a temple. I think I templed that out. Anyway. So what was different in the three? Well, basically, we could begin to see, I think, the strict precautions of the first temple, the first physical temple, the one that Solomon built. Now, when they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant out there in the wilderness, uh, they respected that one as well. I wouldn't want to be next to it. We're going to talk about the high priest, the Ephrod, and or the Ephrod, and what its significance was, and how this all has to do with frequencies and harmonics. So when you talk about what the, the high priest had to wear, they had to wear from their underwear outward. Everything was for a specific reason and had to be done meticulously. One small misalignment, error, something, and that cowboy is dead. So, cool, we got this, right? So, number one, it starts with the fact of the barefoot. Remember, we're talking about a chamber that is supercharged. I mean, it is unlike anything you can imagine. It's nothing what you have been taught in the Bible. I believe it was a much, much different environment there. This was the resonance, the harmonics, the frequency of the Hebrew God existed in there. That power source was alive in there. This ephrod was here to do, I think, two things. Number one, to protect the human, and I think it also served as a communication device. Those stones had to be placed in a specific arrangement. 
if you'll notice that the turban had to have a gold lining on that. Why? Well, come on, folks. If you're going to walk into an environment where you've got these type of particles moving, you'd be dead, dead, mind you, in seconds. You see, it's when you start applying logic and simple science to what we know today, this begins to take on a different application, a different perception. It's not so supernatural as it is other world natural. So here are the breastplate. As I said, I believe that this served as both as a shield covering the main organ of the body and also served as a communication device to the high priest to hear the word of the Lord. Here's another one. And so as you begin to think about this, look at here, even the Pope still wears it there, although obviously not in the same vein. The Catholic Church stole the Hebrew God. Yeah, they did. And put your comments down on that one. We'll, love them. we'll talk about that. So, frequency, harmonics, body. And the whole point to this is, again, focusing in on the science of what we know now and how it has an effect on us. And it does. It is all about frequency. It's the measure of your consciousness, mind. You hear music and you can get happy. You can hear music and get sad. Frequency, emotions. Why do animals pick up on humans that they're around very much? They can pick up when you're depressed. They can pick up when you're happy. They have a far more greater sensitivity to the frequency and the harmonics. So when we talk about the Holy of Holies, this, this is a very interesting layout. I begin to think about this on a subatomic level and begin to think about what's happening in here. I mean, gold is a conductor. I mean, it, that, that, like again, we said before. I said before, it, it, it has so many different applications. And I began to think, if you built a room, specifically how it was positioned to the stars, how it was positioned in its dimensions, how the meticulously attention was paid to every square inch of this. Gold, every the solid gold in here. I mean, these cherubs, I mean, I wouldn't want to go in there, be candid with you, um, because I, I, I know enough now that I can't put my carbon bioform without protection in an environment like this. I believe that it was alive with the presence of the Hebrew God. When it was under construction, they could not get outside this box. They literally, it was, it's quite fascinating when you understand because apparently as the myth goes, and because I say myth, because this is not actually in the Bible, but is in other documents, that the preparation of each laborer was one a volunteer, because the, the likelihood of you dying because you screwed up was very high. Um, but then again, I mean, you're making a place for the very presence of the existent. That's just, I mean, can you begin to think about this now? The deity, God, Jehovah, is on a wavelength, a frequency. It carries radiation. It carries accelerated particles. You getting it? We are of a lower vibration. So I propose that this room was actually one large superconductor. I believe it had the ability to both send and receive in signals. I believe it had as well power within it. 
that could radiate from outside of this. I think that if it had uh, certain transponders, transporters, other devices around, that when the deity was active in here, that it would have a corresponding grid pattern that would go out from it. And I believe that that's exactly what happened in this temple. I believe that, again, this is where it happened. And so when you begin to think about this, only one human goes in here, and only one time of the year. And very specific, and the high priest never, never turns his back. Never. Because he'd die. It's a fact. So I have a question. So the Temple of Solomon constructed was different from others. The high priest had to prepare himself from the underwear to the turban lined with gold to protect him. Only once a year, all precautions taken, any person other than the high priest would die instantly. So what happened when Babylon attacked and they raided the temple and stripped it of all the gold, all the precious stones, all the special material? What? You, you, come on. If it was during the time of Solomon, and I believe all the way up until even with the bad kings that were in there, which there were three or four before, I think this is what happened, folks. And this is my personal opinion, my theory. I believe the deity left. I think he left, guys. There's been no evidence of him, of the power of this Hebrew deity since then. Now, it's just my thought. Because something had to have changed. It never was the same even with the second temple. It never had that, that energy because I believe it up and left. And I don't think it's been back. Do I think it's been around? Yeah, I do. I think it's been around far more than we may think. And if you begin to think about this, it takes on a whole different perspective. All right, well, thanks, folks. Um, just my thoughts, and uh, you're certainly welcome to put yours. All right, be kind to one another. Take care.